Houdini is generally not regarded as a modeling program. It does a pretty good job at procedural modeling, that's kind of where it shines, but in a traditional modeling sense, it's not really used for that. But it is actually fully capable of being utilized as that. But there is one tool in particular that's used quite a bit, which is the edge split or edge loops that is a little bit obscure to try and find inside of Houdini if you don't know what you're looking for. So I wanted to go over that tool today and take a look at how it can be used. So I'm just going to drop in a geometry node here. If it will work, there we go. And then I'm going to drop in a box just to demonstrate this. And I'm just going to up the subdivisions to let's go with like three. So first of all, the, there are a couple of ways to kind of divide up polygons. You're probably used to a knife tool, which you can use to, you know, split polygons inside of Houdini. We obviously have a knife tool as well. And if you set that up, you go ahead, drag it into wherever you want and press exit and it will drop in a loop cut around your object. Now that's only if it's something simple like this. If you wanna do something more complex, then it's going to not work. You're gonna to have to be using the edge loop tool, which is in Houdini called the poly split, or this is at least how you access that tool. Cause this can be used for a couple different things. So if I go ahead and just hit enter in here, you see I get this little visualization to pop up. So as I drag around, you see that I have a point basically that I'm gonna place onto our object here. And if I go ahead and do that and just click in there, it's going to adjust and I can kind of draw whatever I want. And if I hit escape there, it's gonna reset. But if I go ahead and just draw something out, hit enter, it's going to create a cut of our geometry in the exact shape that I made. So if I go ahead and undo that, we can go ahead and change this from shortest distance from the path type to edge loop. And once I do that, you see that I now have this edge loop that is going to be cut in our geometry. So if I go ahead and click in there, it's going to create an edge loop. And I have a few options down here. So the ones that you're gonna be kind of used to are gonna be a number of loops. So if I drag this up, you see that it splits our geometry into however many loops that we set in here. So I can go ahead and drag this up or down, we'll get that. But if I go ahead and select this match profile, it's going to do things a little bit differently. If I switch to this edge percentage, it's going to adjust according to whatever I put here. So if I just drop that back down to one, or zero, it's going to place the edge loop wherever along that percentage from zero to one that I want, or in this case, I guess zero to one. But if I go ahead and up this, it's gonna keep this percentage, it's going to use that, and I can kind of control the spacing of these loop cuts. And I can switch the profile here, and it's going to do some different stuff. So it's basically going to reverse the percentage. But if I have this unchecked and I click this match profile, you can see that it's going to, or if I keep this edge percentage, I guess, checked and then keep this match profile selected, it's going to add edge loops with our original thing in here, but it's not going to evenly distribute them. It's going to keep this percentage here while increasing the edge loops on the other side. So if I go ahead and uncheck that and uncheck the match profile, it's going to add them in evenly across the, between the two edge loops that we're kind of subdividing here, but we can adjust this kind of how we want. Now, if you just have this selected, Without the edge percentage, it's going to default to the middle here or wherever you put it, I guess. Um, and then you can control it further with this edge percentage. Now you can also output these 
screw pass. So if I go ahead and just drop in like a poly bevel, just to demonstrate here, and I select this split group path, see that we have this, these two selected, and we could further you know, divide these up if we wanted to, or we could do whatever we wanted with those. But this is essentially the edge loop tool inside of Houdini. It is a very common tool in other modeling applications, but it's definitely not <laughs> right, readily um, apparent to how to get the edge loop inside of Houdini. I didn't know about this for a very, very long time. And once I figured it out, I was so happy because I thought that there was no edge loop tool in Houdini. And I was like, how could they possibly forget this? Because that is so essential to different modeling techniques. But if you didn't know how to do that, this is going to be the tool for the job. So hopefully this helped you out. I definitely recommend looking into all of the different tools for traditional modeling inside of Houdini because it is something that you can definitely do and take advantage of the semi-procedural nature because even though it is kind of a destructive workflow, it's also not because it is a node-based program. So you can do a lot of things and then if you want to change it later, you can change what you need to or what you want to and then update just a couple things and it'll all kind of propagate throughout your your network and you don't have to change too much or really go back and just redesign the entire thing you can pretty quickly make large changes and that's not something that you can really accomplish in other programs necessarily but houdini is very powerful um, in, in many different ways for modeling whether it be traditional or procedural so Take a look at the different tools. There's a lot there, but hopefully this helps you out. And if you didn't know how to make edge loops inside Houdini, now you do. So I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel, a bunch of stuff on uh, Houdini. So if you want to learn more about Houdini, I do have stuff coming out on Houdini 19.5, the new update that just came out. And I also have stuff on Redshift, a little bit on Cinema 4D, Clarice and Octane as well. As well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you check those out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.